Uh, really quick before we start, I did want to add, we are creeping up on 10k subs, which is uh, <laughs> interesting uh, given the history on this channel. I've only chosen to recognize subscriber milestones just once, because, uh, <laughs> I mean, if you really think about it, the 10,000 subscribers is no different than the 6,996 subscriber. But with that said, I figured I'd do a QA and a for this one, just because it'll probably be years before I choose to do something like this again. <laughs> so if you have a question about anything, be it me, yourself, Genshin, lore or the universe that's right i'm a, i'm 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 a, I'm a well-versed individual <laughs> feel free to ask i will answer every question but let's just say i've seen some of the questions that some of you niggas have pulled from the depths of the fucking forbidden zone so hopes are not high for this <laughs> but it should be fun so we'll see just for for, for every question that says no we'll call special as this one let's just have one about like space huh like how far away are the stars <laughs> Now, with that said, let's talk Xiao Zhang Li and the Yakshas. Despite whatever propaganda Scar a bunch of munch puts out there about himself, Zhao is probably Genshin Impact's most tragic character. Once long ago, he was taken advantage of, which resulted in him being forced to kill many people against his will. He even had to devour their dreams. After being freed of this burden, he then became a Yaksha for Rex Lapis, where they were dealing with problems much bigger than they were, which caused all of them to die except for one thanks to the God of Hope. In the present day, Zhao is a self-deprecating recluse who often views himself as an instrument of war more than a being capable of holding a conversation. While there are many aspects of his life that one can point to as being especially tragic, what I I wanted to discuss was the Yakshas and the Lord of Geo Rex Lapis's extremely questionable actions and even assembling the group in the first place for a task he alone should have been burdened with. In choosing to share his divine responsibility with beings that were not divine in nature, he inadvertently caused the deaths of an entire race of Illuminated Beasts. The Yakshas, for those unaware, were in essence the super niggas of the Illuminated Beasts. They were pretty good at killing, but that's about it. <laughs> but it's because they were good at this solemn act that they were once called upon by Rex Lapis to take down the remains of evil gods, because as we all know, gods are immortal. Again, this is not me coping for Fosalor's sake. Zhao's story plainly writes, gods are immortal. So, uh, <laughs> see you in Farina's second story quest, Fosalor's. It's because because the gods are immortal that even after their deaths in the Archon War, they continued to cause problems for Liyue. In the book Yaksha's Guardian of Adepti, it said, quote, Liyue suffered many outbreaks of disease in ancient times. Some say this was caused by the chaos of the relentless war in between the gods. The defeated were squashed beneath the rocks of the earth, where they decomposed and became soil, and finally re-entered the everlasting elemental cycle. Some of the gods' souls were filled with bitterness at their fates and refused to suffer it any longer. Their bitterness materialized and became became evil monsters. The monster's rage manifested itself in the form of diseases, monster infestations, and all kinds of other strange occurrences. The monsters ravaged the land and it turned into a wilderness and unleashed all manner of evil upon the rivers and seas. They inflicted untold suffering on the people, hence what we call monsters are in fact physical manifestations of the resentment of gods defeated in war. The Yakshas were tasked with taking down these demons, and of the many Yakshas that existed, the strongest five were Aladdin. Bonanis, Bosatius, Indarius, and Manigi, Man, 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 Managius. Man, 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 oh my lord. <laughs> They spent many a years fighting alongside Morax, quelling the divine evil of Liyue, but because what they were dealing with was in fact divine, it proved too much for them and they too started to succumb. Something known as karmic debts began to infect most, if not all, of the Yakshas, causing them to go insane. Quote, there came a day when the Yakshas, despite their might, found their deeds had taken their toll, and that the remnants of divine bitterness had begun to poison them. Some descended into a blind rage of a kind that cannot be put into words, or were driven by fear to equally indescribable madness. Some turned on and destroyed each other. Some were lost to delusions of the mind. After a thousand years scourges, three of the five were slain and one disappeared. Many other Yakshas of unknown name also either died or fled. In the end, only one of the five, Aladdis, survived. Quite literally, the only reason Jab also did not go insane and die was because Venti saved him. Once, Zhao was all alone in a battle so fierce it said he just barely won, but because he used up nearly all of his strength during the fight, it appeared as if his karmic debt was finally able to catch up with him. He fell to the ground in excruciating pain as the divine hatred started to take over before 
all of a sudden he heard a flute playing a melody that instantly removed the pain. He never cared to find out who was playing the flute, so never investigated, but later just reasoned it was the animal Archon. So there you have it. That is essentially the entire story of Liyue's mighty defenders, the Yaksha. One thing I found <laughs> pretty funny was the book's emphasis on the responsibilities of divine endowment. It literally says, quote, For this reason, it is said that the wages of being blessed with supernatural power is a destiny of hardship and eventual destruction, for the Yaksha lost all his friends, family, and those he fought alongside. He built up an incalculable karmic debt from the violent deeds his life necessitated, and the consequence was a heart filled with darkness and hatred from which there was no rest. There was no reward to be gained for making an enemy of his own bitterness and hatred from the old days, nor was there any escape from the unbearable suffering. The torment ate away his hearts like an insatiable wolf, and an infinite number of lifetimes could have done nothing to reduce it. But this is only true because Rex Lapis asks something very specific of them. Having supernatural powers doesn't mean you're destined for a life of eventual destruction. Uh, apparently, it only means that if Rex Lapis is your god. <laughs> I mean, go look at Yai Miko. She's straight chilling in Inazuma, and she called herself the most powerful yokai to ever live. But this seems to be more of a Zhang Li thing than anything. I mean, hell, look at his voice line on visions. Visions are also a type of contract. You should know that all power comes at a price. For every bit of power you gain, so too do you gain more responsibility. Man, this nigga must be buzzing at the seams for some shit to go down on Liyue. As soon as the monsters invade, this nigga's gonna be looking, just rubbing his hands at Noel. You like your vision, don't you, nigga? Then Noel finna hit him with the fuck? No, nigga, take this shit back. To be honest, I'm feeling a little dejected. Well, sure, this vision proves that the Archons think I'm worthy, but why is it a Geo vision? I mean, Geo's the furthest thing from Animo. And for a night of Favonius. Rex Lapis is the Geo Archon. Post Archon War, he was probably the strongest being in Tevat. He was ruling over Li Wei. He had the people's faith, he had the Gnosis, and he had the authority of Geo. Why then would he ask too much of the Yakshas when he had possession of a Gnosis, which according to him, gave gods the power to protect their nation? Historian Vision says, quote, Yet no matter how one looks at it, the loss of this divine ability to defend Liyue was too great a price to pay. Too great a price to pay. Okay, I mean, look, all I'm saying is dealing with the divine should be the divine's responsibility alone, because otherwise we end up in situations like this where the entire race was <laughs> wiped out, man. I I'm telling you, man, one of these Yakshas were killing one of these demons and the demon was looking up and fuck all the Yakshas, it was like, I, I yearn for the downfall of your race. And then just somewhere off the voice, Zhang Li just goes, I got you, nigga, this finna happen soon. <laughs> As Archon of Liyue, Rex Lapis held the ultimate responsibility for the safeguarding of his city as well as the tools necessary to do so, yet chose instead to delegate parts of his responsibility to the Adepti, with the most consequential being dealt to the Yakshas, who had to deal with divine wrath. Surely the situation wasn't beneath him. I mean, hell, we saw someone like A, the Archon of Inazuma, come to kill some Rift Wolves because she herself thought this was something worthy of an Archon's actions. Recently, I have observed a number of changes in the external world from the plane of Euthymia. The most serious of these being the attack on the sacred Sakura by numerous Rift Hounds. I considered this matter worthy of my attention, so I pursued them, and they led me here, where I happened to run into you. This all raises questions regarding the sharing of divine responsibilities to non-divine beings. Was Rex Lapis ignorant to the effects of the divine hatred, overestimated the Yaksha's resilience against the weight of karmic debts, or did he inadvertently lead them to a fate beyond saving?